Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We offer our worship, the sacrifice of our heart, which is the fruit of our lips, giving confession of your name. We thank you because you are real to us, for in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We thank you because in your presence there is no condemnation. There is freedom. There is liberty. And tonight let every chain, every limitation that exists in the life of your children fall to the ground forever in the name of Jesus. We take authority over this atmosphere. We capture every thought and every heart to the obedience of Christ Jesus. And we thank you for what you will do by the power of your word and by the ministry of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. If you are excited to be in the presence of God, can you give God a big clap offering? Amen. It's good to see every one of us again. And I believe that we are set for what God is going to do tonight. Please give me Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2. Just one or two prayers before we seated. Just one or two prayers before we are seated this afternoon. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2, my emphasis, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of who? Shout it together, of who? The day of vengeance is proclaimed. The day of vengeance is the season where God arises to make reprisal attacks against your oppressors, against your adversaries. The day of vengeance is the season when your God arises as a mighty one. The Bible says the Lord God in the midst of his people is mighty. How many of you believe that you are in that season? every battle that has existed in your life prior to this time because you are in this service and for the purpose of the things you will hear and by the move of the spirit those battles are over forever you don't sound like victorious people i said those battles are over forever in the name of jesus first corinthians 15 in verse 57 it says but thanks be to god who gives us victory in christ jesus second corinthians 2 verses 14 now thanks be to god who always makes us triumph there's such a thing as the taste and the sound of victory how many of you want to experience that and i prophesy again that because you are in this service whether you are here or you are following online every battle of the oppressor in your life is overturned in your sake Amen. is overturned in your favor Amen. is overturned for your sake Amen. and god will pursue your pursuers Amen. you don't sound like you are interested in this kind of things god will avenge you of your adversaries Amen. you know jesus taught us to pray in, in luke chapter 18 he says, shall not God, the righteous judge, avenge his elect day and night who cry unto him? Can I prophesy to you again? Every prayer that will come out of your lips today, heaven will hear. There's going to be a shaking in the heavens. There's going to be a tumult on earth. And the victory is sure for you today. If you believe it, shout a bigger amen. 
Now in the next few minutes, I want you to tell the Lord in one prayer, Lord, arise on my behalf and bring an end to any form of oppression, any battle, any satanic contention that has existed in my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Excuse me, are you praying? Are you praying? Ask your neighbor if you are praying. No, ask your neighbor if that is prayer. You see, you are laughing to your neighbor. I said, open your mouth and tell the Lord that tonight, let every contention of the enemy in my life come to an end and let there be victory. Let there be the shout of, of victory from my life this night, this evening, in the name of Jesus. Pray like you came to New Madrid. To declare the day of vengeance of our God. Let this be my season of victory. Let this be my season of triumph. Let this be my season where the stone, the mountains are rolled away. Who are thou, O my great mountain? The false Zerubbabel. Thou shalt be made as flat as a plane. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord.
the voices and the strings. Sing to your maker. As you sing, he's mighty in our midst. ascribe to your great name and we thank you for what you will do tonight Lord I ask that you grant me utterance to minister your word with wisdom and accuracy to your people and I pray that via the ministry of your word let your power be displayed in this place let strongholds be destroyed in the name of Jesus I want you to hold hands with somebody I just feel like we should pray again I just sense a spirit of prayer coming on this place right now I want you to agree with your neighbor in just two minutes that everything that looks like a stronghold that the enemy has mounted against the life of my brother or my sister whether in their lives or in their family in the name of Jesus let it come down tonight and be destroyed. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice in agreement. Make sure the person you are holding is praying. Make sure the person you are holding is praying. Every obstacle, every limitation, every mountain, every wall, every chain, every reproach, let them come crushing down by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Name we pray. Please take your beautiful seat. Let's get straight to the word quickly. We are going to do more prayers at the end of the teaching. So I want you to be ready. But for now, please take your Bibles, your notepads, your jotters, your books. Let's receive some level of spiritual intelligence from the Word of God. Before the Word, 
First of all, it's good to see every one of us again. I welcome you to Neumatech. And I want to appreciate all our online followers um, who are following from around Nigeria and the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. Whatever platform you are streaming this service through, I would trust that the power of God available in this place will reach out to you in your homes, in your offices, wherever you are in Jesus' name. Mommy, you're welcome. It's good to see mommy again. God bless you. Please give her a big hand and a big God bless you. Spiritual warfare part three. Pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. Will you be offended if I ask you to pray again? While you are seated, can you just speak in tongues for two minutes? Just pray in the spirit if you can for two minutes. God will open the understanding of somebody this evening or morning or afternoon or wherever, whatever time zone that you are listening from. Come on, you can pray better than this. The hearing ears and the seeing eye belongs to God. Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes. Let illumination and understanding come into my life. Such that will create and orchestrate a shift, a change, a turnaround, an encounter through the ministry of your word that will break every limitation that will break every obstacle that will cause me to rise as a mighty man a mighty woman fearless of the activities and the onslaughts of darkness hallelujah second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 to 5 please give me your ears and your heart pay attention quietly and listen because tonight there will be an enormous supply of spiritual intelligence some of you after this night because of the wisdom you receive from the word of god you'll become victorious in the place where you are in life and destiny I believe you, if you believe that you say a bigger amen. amen and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free there's such a thing as encounter with the light that comes from the word of god the lord spoke to me at the beginning of this series few days to the first sunday one of those days i was praying and i heard the voice of god very clear and expressly he said, son, it is time for a militia church to arise in the end time. That's exactly what he said. A militia church to arise. Now all through this season, why we treat this series, I want you to take advantage. There is a concentration in the atmosphere of the spirit of God over your life there is a revelation of divine strategies and wisdom from the lord himself that will help us not only to combat the battles we face now but even the battles that we'll face in the future it is obvious that the scripture tells us that my people perish because of lack of knowledge our keys in this kingdom are enshrouded or are captured in spiritual knowledge delivered to us through the word of god that helps us to rise as champions and as mighty men and women in our day and particularly when we take this series on spiritual warfare it is important for you to know that you need to be in the spirit of the teaching these are the times where we have to be militant as far as the issue of life and destiny is concerned are, we, are you with me here you have to be aggressive 
the bible calls our lord jesus the lamb and the lion so when we take our time to do this kind of teachings it is important that you imbibe the spirit of the teaching that if for nothing at least let there be holy anger stirred up in your spirit let there be aggression concentrated in your spirit if you have nothing to contend against at least you should be concerned about your family members or concerned about your brother or sister seated near you and i want you to know brothers and sisters that as far as destiny is concerned there is a stage of destiny perhaps the preliminary stage of destiny that is prosecuted in warfare destiny can never be executed or prosecuted without a fight paul the apostle said in second timothy chapter 4 i have fought a good fight first then i have finished the race and i have kept the faith for you to live to become all that god has written concerning you scripture says i come in the book in the volume of the books that is written of me for you to enter the experience and the manifestation of everything that god has designed concerning you you will of necessity come to points of contentions and desperate times call for desperate measures so if nothing will happen this night this being the third day of this series at least somebody should be angry today and let that anger create actions decisions that will create actions that will change your story and give you a turnaround encounter i thought i'm talking to people today in the name of jesus are we ready tonight second corinthians 10 from verse 3 to 5 let's start from verse 3 so we get the context the teaching tonight will be extensive but i trust the lord with few words to do it within a short period of time because i want us to pray we are going to take out enough time to pray at the end of this teaching we are going to take out ample time to pray i will teach you some things that the lord has taught me in the place of spiritual warfare i have told you before there are many graces in the body of christ the bible says the god of all grace who has called you all grace means there are several graces that God has released to the body of Christ in form of men, in form of men, vessels. And it is important that every territory, in every territory and in every church, the body of Christ and the family of God within that geographical territory or church, local church, must understand and discern the graces that God has released to them. Every church must understand and discern the grace in their man of god one of the few graces that god has given to me by the privilege of his mercies is to be a custodian of mysteries that make for spiritual warfare i can do it as extensively as i can i don't need to study for it it's a grace god gave me and you know let me say this aside before we go into the teaching sometimes when you start to chart your course in life and destiny there are certain limitations and certain barriers and challenges that will come around your life that god will deliberately leave and his purpose is so that when you decide to arise and confront those challenges daring while confronting it will be the unveiling and the opening of the potentials embedded in you that will make for your destiny he, he spoke to gideon he said thou mighty man of valor if there was no oppression from the nation of Midian, there would have been no gideon some of the things i will teach you today and some of the prayers we will lead <laughs> some of the prayers i will lead you to pray are things that while struggling to engage destiny I stumbled on these things by divine revelation and they have worked for me again and again how many of you are ready to receive so please give me attention and write when you can and after that we will pray finally 
just to announce this i sense in my spirit this afternoon before coming here that while i teach there are people here with afflictions in their bodies that would disappear while the teaching is going on you didn't hear what i said just in case you are not listening let me say it again i said i sensed heavily this afternoon while i was praying that while the teaching will be going on there are people with afflictions in their bodies that it will disappear as a matter of fact there are a few people here with growths while the word is going on you will only discover at the end of the sermon that the growths have disappeared i sensed it and it's going to happen there will be deliverances that will be silently going on while i'm teaching the bible says jesus was teaching in the synagogue and the power of god was present be very conscious of the fact that you are not just receiving information the difference between this and a lecture is that i am speaking spirit to you i'm not just releasing words it's your spirit that is receiving first before your ears are hearing are we here your spirit is receiving so there is an activity of the holy ghost that will be going on respectively across this hall and even online some of you you will be captured into dimensions of encounter spiritual encounters while i'm teaching i mean what i'm saying some of you your eyes will open and you begin to have angelic encounters while i'm teaching not when we are praying while i'm teaching do you believe that i don't know about you but i believe i saw it before coming i believe it so i cannot i don't know how the service will go but at any point we are not able to contain it we will just break up into prayer but there will be a lot of happenings that will go on here while i'm teaching as a matter of fact i sense the anointing coming like dew you know why i said like dew you hardly know when dew comes upon grass you only go out in the morning and see that the grasses are wet that's what's happening right now some of you are getting anointed as you are even before we start the teaching you are already getting anointed where you are seated while i'm teaching anointings and mantles and graces are resting on people and the essence is so that you can leave this place a better and a higher version of yourself than you came and the lord will confirm his word with signs in jesus name second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh he says we do not walk according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in god for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments the king james will say imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ so the bible interestingly tells us that as far as warfare is concerned it is not a natural activity that we engage in we don't engage in warfare naturally in other words the concept of spiritual warfare is not only a reality but is a constant as far as your journey and your sojourn in this earth is concerned i told you last week that someone said once that life is not fun fair life is warfare whether you are knowledgeable about it or not whether you are aware about it or not there are contentions going on around your life your destiny your family and these contentions are trapped in the realm of the spirit spiritual forces coming together to ensure that the force generated from your destiny is not enough to push you into that place where god wants you to be am i communicating here and that's the reason why the business of warfare is not done naturally he said though we walk in the flesh we may be living and dwelling in this suit called bodies 
we go around our various duties we go around our various activities as human beings but he says make no mistakes when it comes to warfare battles and contentions it doesn't happen naturally and then the, the scripture was kind enough to tell us that the war the weapons we use in engaging these battles engaging these spiritual forces he said they are not carnal weapons they are not natural weapons that means they are spiritual spiritually designed and spiritually engaged somebody say after me spiritually designed oh you don't sound like there is life in you come on say it again come on we can do better say it one more time spiritually and spiritually engaged let's do it again spiritually designed and spiritually engaged he says however these weapons are mighty in god why because john 4 24 tells us that god is spirit so you will only activate the use of these weapons when you begin to walk with god and allow the holy spirit supply intelligence to you by which you will prosecute these battles to the pulling down of strongholds 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 second corinthians 2 verse 11 He says, lest Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The word devices there is the Greek word stratomai. It means strategies. Now, it is important for us to know that Satan is not powerful in terms of physical strength. Satan is not powerful in terms of physical ability that's the reason why the bible is quick to tell us that we do not war after the flesh however satan remember that he was once an angel of god and perhaps one of the high ranking or highly classified angels the bible told us in ezekiel 28 from verse 12 for 13 14 to 15 don't go there but you just listen for the purpose of this text the Bible told us that he was specially designed by God. He was an anointed cherub. The word anointing there or anointed means that he had the spirit of God. A measure of the spirit of God was on him. And because of that, he had access to certain abilities that were only of the God kind. Remember that the Bible says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance so the anointing that was upon satan when he fell he fell with that anointing it was not taken from him that anointing gave satan access to the wisdom of god gave satan access to the ways of god and he had accumulated so much of it maybe that's the reason why he considered rebelling against god In fact, the word anoint, anointed there, thou was the anointed cherub. The word anointed as used in that scripture is the Hebrew word mimshak. The word mimshak means to expand or enlarge. In other words, to enlarge or stretch your tentacles, to enlarge or stretch your grip. Or by extension, it means to extend your influence, your ability to govern and to rule now when satan fell he fell with that anointing that's the reason why satan is in the business of trying to take over the systems of the world so that he can dominate mankind now the bible tells us that this being satan is intelligent he has devices these devices are not cutlass they are not guns they are not intercontinental ballistic missiles they are not rpgs and gpmgs and smgs no <laughs> satan will not be so foolish to carry those weak weapons the bible says he has devices these devices go beyond just spirits like we have discussed 
they go beyond just principalities and powers and spirits ranking spirits in his hierarchy of leadership they go beyond demons and their operation these devices are mind control systems satanic programmings demonic experiments and enforcements these devices are demonic patterns and cycles cultural trends satan has mastered by the wisdom he has different ways i hope you know that satan has been on earth for a long time hello please when i need you to respond i want you to respond hello satan has been on earth for a long time he's several thousands of years old and so he has studied humanity he has studied our way of life studied our limitations with every generation that he encountered and through all of these rigorous studies he has woven out systems by which he can control and influence humanity on earth in fact some of the devices of satan are human beings themselves this guy we are dealing with is very intelligent and that's why when you begin to talk about spiritual warfare ignorance cannot be afforded in the day of battle the bible says in proverbs chapter 24 i believe in verse 4 or 5 it said the wise man increases in strength and the bible says we should not be ignorant of his devices satanic programmings he has created trends and made them interwoven with different cultures all for the purpose of creating fortresses above the system of mankind the purpose of creating influences negative influences over human beings satan's desire is to control and rule and that's where we have the phenomenon strongholds now let's look at strongholds a little bit write this down strongholds let's define it a very simple definition that we can all work with if you understand and you are following please say amen, amen. a stronghold is a sustained a sustained faulty pattern of thinking a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deceptions a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deceptions comma often enforced by demons let me take it again a sustained faulty pattern of thinking a pattern of thinking that means it's a mindset based on lies and deceptions often enforced by demons the mind is a very powerful center as far as the existence of a human being is concerned the mind is a very powerful component in the build up of a human being the mind is the bridge between the spiritual dimension and the physical dimension the mind is the organ for expression and so satan wants control over the mind because once he can control the mind he can control the body the body becomes a puppet everything you do is as a result of what is in your mind yes or no so i'm going to come to mindset so satan has created over time mind control systems you know when the bible speaks about the fiery darts of the devil in ephesians chapter 6 it says taking off the shield of faith 
with which you quench the fiery darts of the enemy for some translation they use the word arrows many of us think that okay this may be physical arrows like arrows fired on you no not necessarily sometimes they can be but not necessarily all the time how about arrows of depression how about arrows of frustration how about arrows of several kinds of limitations that will work on your mind because satan all he needs to do is initiate a programming in the mind of an individual and that individual will naturally destroy himself that's where demonic technology has gone to say amen brothers and sisters please believe it there is demonic technology there is satanic civilization there is a way they do things there they are not fools you forget about what you watch in nigerian films all those babala all those are just basic levels in the occult the systems of darkness have gone ahead of humankind and where it has evolved to is the place of mindset so a stronghold is a sustained pattern of thinking that is faulty but then it is continuous in the life of an individual based on lies and deceptions that means before it became a stronghold it was first of all a mindset this mindset or pattern of thinking came out from giving heed to lies and deceptions informations that were not true give me first timothy chapter 4 from verse 1 to 2 informations knowledge based informations that are not true and then a person su sustains those informations and continue to act and to think based on those informations even though they are faulty and they are lies I pray God will open our eyes today in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Now the Spirit expressly says, Who is talking here? The Spirit, isn't it? The Holy Ghost is talking. That in the latter times, the latter times there also means the last days which we are living in. He says, Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and what? Doctrines. So it's not only a church that can have doctrines. There are several kinds of doctrines. Doctrines are a set of teachings or a body of truth that is or a curriculum of information that is supposed to be disseminated to an individual. That is what we call discipleship, isn't it? So you are being discipled into a body of truth, into a system of knowledge into a set of teachings so that at the end you begin to reason and think in a particular way the bible says that in the city of antioch because paul and barnabas sat down for one year teaching the believers the word of god after one year they had dealt with the reasoning of these guys they had changed the mindset and the pattern of their thinking and the bible says when they went out the unbelievers saw them and called them Christians. Everybody say doctrines. So there are several kinds of doctrines. There are biblical doctrines which are teachings from the Bible. Now, I, I, I hope, oh God, I hope. Okay, let me just say this for those of us who are interested to know. That the Bible contains the word of God. But the Bible is not completely the Word of God. I hope I apologize just in case I rattle the foundation of our theology. Just in case I offend somebody's theology, I apologize. But I want you to listen carefully. The Bible contains the Word of God, but the Bible in totality is not the Word of God alone. The Bible is a compendium of the speakings of God the speakings of human beings even animals spoke here yes or no 
Spirit spoke here. Yes or no? And that's why in what they call, theologians will call this, and I, I just, please I apologize in case this is a bit too advanced for some of us, okay? But I believe some of us will have a knowledge of this. The bringing together of the different books that made up this Bible, theologians refer to it as canonicity. Canonicity. The canonization of scripture. There was there were certain rules by which these elders sat down and carefully selected the books that will make the Bible. That's why there are 66. There are other books that are not here in this contemporary Bible you have. And some of us know those books, isn't it? They are called the deuterocanonical books. Like Bell and the Dragon, like uh, which other one? Susanna and all of those books. Now, why were they not contained here? There were several rules. But one thing I will tell you is this. They decided that they will bring together books that were written through any of the three individuals. Kings, prophets, or priests. The reason was because in those days, these were the three sets of people that were believed to be anointed and who had offices that helped to communicate God and his heart to his people. They knew that if God would speak, he would either speak to a king or to a priest or through a prophet because these were the three sets of people that were anointed. And that's the reason why all of the books there, especially in the Old Testament, either it was written by a prophet that was renowned in his time or by a king like King David, he wrote Psalms, like Solomon, he, he wrote Psalms and Proverbs. Hezekiah wrote a portion of Proverbs, or it was written by a prophet. So it is the Holy Spirit now, it is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit and his wisdom that we can bring out teachings from this Bible that will reveal the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Otherwise, without the Holy Spirit involved, a native doctor can use this Bible to perform magic, to create charm. Yes or no? It's true. Because it's a book of knowledge, isn't it? It contains information. So an occult man can, through the sponsorship of spirits that are not of God, can meander through scriptures and create a body of truth that is not the truth and these informations can give men access into spiritual dimensions that they have little or no knowledge about i hope we are together here so this is what we call doctrines there is biblical doctrines the set of teachings from the word of god that is supposed to disciple believers and bring them to the mindset and the conformity of the image of Christ. That's why I use the word image, 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 imagination, your mind. It will create, it's like a programming, a system that will create the image of Christ in your mind first. And then you naturally begin to live it out. If you are with me, say amen. There is biblical doctrines, there are sectarian doctrines churches or different denominational sects can come together just to create a teaching that will create a pattern of existence for their members the bible also tells us here that there are doctrines of devils so you have to be careful in these last days who you listen to and what you hear let me say this with all due respect but with every firmness Particularly when a blogger stands up and begins to correct men and women of God that have been faithful teachers of the word for many years. And then a blogger, we don't know who discipled him. We don't know who taught him. We don't know which spirit is upon him or where he's from. He wakes up and because social media is, is the point where everybody meets, he can go there and begin to correct teachings from people who have been renowned teachers of the world for 10 20 30 40 years so you have to be careful 
The Bible says some would depart from the faith. This is the believers here. Remember, I'm talking. We, we, we talked about devices, satanic devices. So even some believers who are not careful and fall into the wrong mindset can become devices of the devil. The Bible says they will give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Next verse, please. Let's finish it up. Speaking lies because they have listened to the doctrines of the and demons are the, the Bible says Satan is the father of lies. That when he speaks, he speaks his language. Lying is his mother tongue. If Satan tells you you are wearing red, check again. If you are wearing white and Satan tells you you are wearing white, check again. Maybe just before he said it or while he was saying it, he changed to the real color. He's a liar. He doesn't, the, the Bible says there's no truth in him. Are you, are, do you understand what I'm telling you? That's the reason why he cannot be redeemed. He can't be saved. He speaks lies naturally. Even when he's quoting scripture, he can be quoting the scripture out of context. Look at what he told Jesus. He said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Now, that is when you are in danger. Not when you foolishly go and want to test God and prove that you are a son of God. The Bible never stated that a son of God needs to prove he said behold now are we the sons of god first john chapter 3 verse 1 he said though it does not yet appear that means we don't need to look like it is a truth that should be stationed in your heart as many that received him to them he gave power to become what sons of god so if he's the father of lies that means his foot soldiers in form of demons and evil spirits they are all liars Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 and it is with these lies that they create a pattern of reasoning that they create a system to control the minds of men because your mind is ruled by the information you receive this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. The word futility means emptiness, vainness. This is a set of people, unbelievers as the scripture declares them. Next verse please. That they are having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to walk all uncleanness and greediness so because of a bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge that these guys have that's the reason why they live the way they live the Bible says their imaginations are vain and as a result, their lifestyle is all about uncleanliness, iniquity, immorality, and greediness. So when you see a greedy or a stingy person, there is a programming at work in his mind. Somebody say programming. Shout it again. Say programming. Nobody just misbehaves like that. Everything comes as a result of a system of thinking, a pattern of reasoning. That's the reason why by the grace of God I'm writing a book and I trust the Lord for wisdom to finish that book. It will be a blessing to the body of Christ. What do you do when the enemy is you? But sometimes when we are ignorant of certain knowledge, sometimes when we lack access to the truth, the Bible says it is possible that we can live like the Gentiles. Their way of life is a programming that comes from their mind. Strongholds. Strongholds. 
Strongholds exist in three dimensions, primarily. Strongholds exist in three dimensions. Number one, a stronghold will either exist as a, a you know, psychologically. Strongholds will either exist, number one, psychological, number two, ancestral, number three, territorial. Number one, psychological, that's mindset now thinking patterns way of reasoning number two it will exist as ancestral family line limitations patterns that come with the origin of families or it will exist territorially Now, what is a mindset? A mindset is an ideology. It's an ideology, value system, or thinking pattern. An ideology, value system, or thinking pattern. I've said it already. It's a way of reasoning. That's a mindset. How a person thinks. How he sees life. His perspective of life, of destiny, of God, of mankind. All of these are attributed to a way of reasoning. That's why it's called a mindset. It's a system of thinking that has been set in motion. Now, it is important to know that when a mindset, what makes a mindset a stronghold is this. That that thinking pattern has been fortified by spirit entities and used as an access a point of access into the lives of people when a thinking pattern a way of reasoning that is fortified you know what it means to fortify it means to surround to barricade it's like to try to defend something if you have ever passed by a barracks an army barracks or a regimental environment there are all kinds of physical obstacles placed around all kinds of machinery put in place to fortify that place so it is called a fortress isn't it now this is a set of things it's it, 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 you know a mindset a set of reasoning a thinking pattern but it has been fortified by spirit entities that means that they have supplied spiritual power to it so that that mindset once it is introduced to the life of a man it programs that man in such a way that he he cannot even break out of it it, it forces the man to go in the direction of that mindset and then the man becomes a slave of his thinking pattern you know why because behind the mindset that he has there are spirit entities that have fortified it around him he said they are mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down arguments imaginations have you ever argued with a person before especially when what you are saying is the truth and you know this person is speaking out of ignorance why will a young man or a young woman argue in ignorance against the truth that's because unknown to them what they think is truth is not the truth but they are blinded because there are spiritual forces there are spirit beings that have surrounded their minds to secure that mindset in them so that they can become a victim of that mindset and they can perpetually be bounded to that mindset if you are with me shout amen, amen. that's what makes it a stronghold so it depends on the spirit the spirit can either be the spirit of god he introduces you to the knowledge of God's word and then that information carefully secured in your mind by the Holy Ghost becomes a stronghold and that's the reason why the Bible says if the righteous fall seven times he will rise up you know why there is a system of knowledge that the righteous knows 
and is secured in his mind and in his life by the Holy Ghost. So that in itself is a stronghold. He said, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg bread. And yet you meet men like Bishop Oedepo who will say, I can never be poor. I can never be broke. And some of the people listening to him, they are as broke as possible. And you are wondering why he's saying that in the midst of this economy is a mindset that has become a stronghold. The Bible says in Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, he said, The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. Proverbs 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. Why? Why is it a strong tower? A strong tower is a stronghold, isn't it? It's a fortress that you cannot destroy. It's an impregnable place. That means your knowledge of the power that is in the name of Jesus makes your life a stronghold. You become a safety location. And you can walk through. He said, what did he say in Psalms 23 verse 4? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The reason why the, the, the valley and all of its activity of death cannot hurt me or cannot penetrate me is because I am though walking in the midst of it, but there is a security of a stronghold around my life. So what you know is what controls you. What you know is what rules over you. And could it be that Satan's advantage in your life is as a result of an extra ignorance that you have? Or could it be that Satan's advantage in your life is because of something you know? Because there's something you can know that can make Satan always on the advantage in your life. For instance, if you came from a place where they have thought that if you see cats, cockroach, rat, birds, any animal you see in your house, they are demons. If you came from such a place, maybe a congregation, respectfully speaking, and you see that if, you know, don't blame other believers or you know other sects in the body of Christ that believe some of these things. They do it as a result of the revelation of the mysteries of the word of God that has been revealed to them. So it's either they are bankrupt of something or they are short of certain higher classified information that should increase the potentials that they have in Christ. So you come from a place where they say, cockroach, if he flies across your parlor, demons. If you see rats under your bed, demons. If you see a bed standing on your fence in the evening, demons. If you see snake, anything you see in form of an animal is what? Demons. That's a mindset. Oh. Now, based on that knowledge, Satan can have certain advantage over you. So what he will do now is, because he knows that you already know, yeah, it is locked up here. He will send spirits. The first spirit he will spend send, it is the spirit of fear. To secure that mindset in you and make it a stronghold. And that's why every time a cockroach flew, you were eating your dinner. And then you mistakenly saw a cockroach pass. You start jumping up and down. Hey, they don't come. Oh, they don't come. Oh, they don't come. And you know, some can even go as far as not even eating that food again. How many of you know? There are some people that if you mention anything that has to do with the toilet when they are eating, they stop eating. They won't eat that food again. Why do they behave like that? Somebody say mindset. Strongholds. So he will send the spirit to cage that reason in your mind and make it almost impossible for you to be delivered of that mindset. Why? He will blind your mind from seeing and laying hold of another truth in the word of God. And so you are ruled by fear. There are some people that don't travel once it's the end of the year. Why? Embermont. There are some people that once their loved one travel, their pastor is in trouble till the person gets to his destination. They will not call to sow seed. They will not call to even greet the pastor. Once they are just Damaturu here or the person travel to. Say apostle is at Benishek now. Please pray. 
You know why? Because he heard from somebody that they has they have they have been attacks in Benishek. You know so? So anytime a car gets to Benishek, he knows that the people are in trouble. Now, personally, I don't like cats. All right. But you know, there are some people that once they see a cat, it has to be a witch. Any other animal is good. Even a dog is good to them. But if they see a cat pass, it's a witch. And God bless you, it's a black cat. Hey! Say the grand patron of their coven don't come. Oh. <laughs> Have you not seen families that wake, that you see somebody who wake everybody up in the night praying? Why? She saw or he saw a, a cat on the fence somebody says strongholds now satan is no longer there he has successfully initiated a mindset secured by the spirit of fear and other demon spirits in the minds of those individuals and satan doesn't have to be there they would control themselves into destruction even in technology now they are they are they are, they are now in those days you need to fly an aeroplane with surveillance cameras to go and survey regions where the enemy is isn't it but now there are unmanned vehicles both terrestrial and on the air drones that can just fly and go to where they don't need anybody there is a central intelligence system that has been designed and imputed into those uh, devices and the devices can be flown on their own to another place and make a survey and bring back information and on the strength of that intelligent information the soldiers can go to a battle and conquer the enemy that's how it happens in the realm of the spirit all that satan needs to do is put something in the mind of a man secure it with demon spirits and that man becomes an enemy to himself For instance, the reason why somebody, even if his food falls on the ground, he will pick it up and eat, is because he has heard that they said, disease, no, they kill African man. So even if the food falls on the ground, he will pick it and eat. Meanwhile, there's another person who has a different information, that once food falls to the ground, the ancestors have received it. The gods of his land in worry or, or they, have, they have collected is now liberation. He said, Don't touch it, don't touch it. He may not say it. And suddenly, some of these people are Christians. They got born again, they got saved, but there was no deprogramming, there was no deactivation of that mindset. So they are cultural people wearing the name of being Christians. Some of these strongholds, mindsets. Write this down. Mindsets, number one, permits the operation of spirits in a man's life. Mindsets. What do they do? Number one, they permit the operation of spirits in a man's life. The spiritual agencies that will function in the life of a man part-time is permitted. I use the word permit. Emphasis on the word permit. Because the Bible says the earth he has given to the sons of men spirits don't have total control on earth except they are given permission or license by men and the first license or permission given by a man to a spirit entity is your mindset how you think so number one mindset permits the operation of spirits in a man's life number two mindsets determine the quality of a man's life how you will live your life and the things you will enjoy is designed or determined by your mindset there are some people that grew up from families where they never had enough respectfully speaking maybe because of one you know setback or one situation or the other there was always not enough or let me even use this analogy there are some people who came from houses or families where 
they are many in number and when it's dinner time or when it's breakfast time they will serve the food on a large tray i personally have been to a family like that many years ago when i was small i grew up in a family where everybody has their plates but one day i went to visit a friend many years ago in lagos and i saw that the mother would dish the food on a tray large tray you know that stainless steel tray and put spoons on it and once they say dinner is served everybody begins to rush for a good spot because if you don't get a good spot you are in trouble there's no food for you that night and once they begin to eat everybody is rushing because there are about six or seven people on that tree and if you don't contend with the with the other person so that person may probably have grown up with that mindset that in life i will never have enough so they mise everything that they have they don't believe that there is something called more than enough it's not in their mind mistakenly if hundred thousand enters their account they can be confused for 24 hours have you seen people like that they're just walking on the street like this you greet them they don't answer hundred thousand no hundred thousand he goes for a job interview he's more than qualified and then they are discussing with him they say how much would you want us to pay you and a job that he should collect at least maybe 500 or 700 thousand he will tell them hey, if you pay me 150 is okay you know why because even the tithe of that 150 he has never seen the quality of life that you will live is determined by your mindset I have a mindset that believes that my God is El Shaddai is more than enough. And the best was created for me. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I don't need to go and brag on Instagram that I have a Bentley car. But if I have the money to buy it, I'll buy it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They were created for our pleasure. They were created so that life will be comfortable and we can focus on destiny. But there is somebody with a mindset that feels that those things are the ultimate. So he's pursuing it. Even now, respectfully speaking, as we are talking now, as we are here listening, somebody, after every five, five minutes, he will check the parking lot for his car. And look back. Check the parking lot again. The quality of life is determined by your mindset. Number three, mindset defines our limitations and possibilities. Mindset defines our limitations and possibilities. What is a mountain to one person will become a stepping stone for another person. It depends on how they see it individually. Who are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt be what? A plane. Why? Mindset. So the reason why several entrepreneurs are making a lot of money despite the going down of the economy. Why? They saw problems. Other people saw problems. They saw opportunities. Other people saw limitations. They saw possibilities. A young man is looking for money. He doesn't have money. He's on his phone. And God gives him an idea. Create a system that will help you go around and collect everybody's garbage in this street. Everybody living on this street are wealthy people. Collect their garbage, let them pay you. He say, ah, me. And he's broke. Meanwhile, another person will receive that idea and say, this is opportunity. And then goes to buy this, you know, this cellophane bags, this nylon, black nylon bags. And begins to, call, and from collecting people's dirt or garbage, it becomes a company. And it becomes a millionaire. And then one day, the person who rejected the mindset will be trekking on the street. And he sees one of the trucks of this other individual. I say, hey, I've been thinking this thing five years ago. You will either be limited or you will advance based on your mindset. Number four, finally, mindsets limit divine operations in our lives. The Bible says in Psalm 78 and verse 41, it said they tested the Lord and they limited the Holy One of Israel. How did they limit him? Verse 19 of the same chapter. 
Look at what they said. Yes, again and again. Verse 19. They did not remember his power. No, verse 19. 19, 19. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare? Now when you see a man talk, as a man thinketh in his heart, your words are just the expression of what is in your mind. So if your words carry the capacity and the power to create your future, that's because your future was first created in your mind. There is nothing like future. Future is here. Is here. Can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Next verse. Behold, he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. So they even acknowledged that God performed a miracle. Yet, because of a mindset they have, this is what they said. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? God is limited in our lives based on our reasoning. And that's the reason why we may not be discussing deliverance today but it is important that when a man is born again or has encountered deliverance where the spirits behind the oppressions and limitations in his life are exorcised that man must not be left in that state he must be taken through a state of discipleship where the word of god totally transforms and re-engineers his way of thinking be not conformed romans 12 2 to the standards of this world but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind otherwise those spirits that went listen when a spirit enters the mind of a man what they do is they try to disconfigure the reasoning of that mind they inject their own thought pattern so the man likes alcohol he likes drinking and eventually he becomes born again but he's not taught the word of god he's not taught that you must you must put flesh under subjection he's not taught that drunkenness is a work of the flesh and your flesh is where your sinful nature is and that's where satan takes advantage of you he's not taught those things his mind is still the same way when he got born again Eventually, you discover that he may not stop drinking, even though the spirit enforcing drunkenness has been casted out. He may even want to Christianize the drinking. He say, okay, I'm not drinking a go-go again. This one is Smirnoff. No, be so. Smirnoff what? Smirnoff ice. Which other one? He says origin. No, it's herb. It's herbal. It's herbal. He says zero alcohol. But when you check the motive, So there must be a deactivation of that programming in your mind. You must allow the process of teaching. of in this, You know, I, I, I weep in these days where people don't have time to listen to the word of God. They don't have time to read the word of God. They don't have time to study the word. In this social media generation where we are at a rush for everything. It's a microwave generation. We want everything fast, fast. Brothers and sisters, you cannot achieve mental transformation through that alone. There is what hearing can do for you, but there is also what seeing can do. Somebody says strongholds. So mindsets, very briefly, are sourced either from culture many of us come from different cultures and there is a way and a system by which our people exist there are cultures where if you give back to twins is a problem there are other cultures where if you give back to twins is a good thing There are cultures that if you give back to a person, whether they are Christians or they are whatever, even if their father is a bishop, they must take them to the shrine in the village and stretch the, the child in front of the, the shrine and, and call on the river goddess. Culture. We call it a way of life. Now, there are good, there is a good part of culture in terms of morality, 
respect and all of that but brothers and sisters if you take out time to study culture especially both in africa even in the western world you will see that this that satan has some of these things are originate from satanic activities is a way by which satan fraternizes with the culture of people many of the many of the things we pursue there are some culture that a woman should not walk that's what they believe whatever you are doing once you get married leave your job leave where you are come and stay in your husband's house and become a housewife yes or no the West, westernization what we call westernization modernization is a culture in itself so a child can wake up in the morning and this is how he greets his father hi hello or even call the father by the first name and they are okay with it in the afternoon when he comes back from school the, he, he, the father he, he sees the father and the father says, hey what's up son and he gives what they call what how do you call they cut no they, there's a word you call it now you say they cut handshake abby you are you guys are not talking to me you are pretending you say say cut cut handshake that's a culture that's the same culture now that christianity is on the decline somebody wake up and go to school and come back and say god he doesn't believe in god god is just one of the many theories and beliefs i don't know about you but in case you are thinking of sending your children to school abroad it's good to school abroad but fortify them build a stronghold in their mind let them school in nigeria here first it's good let them drink gary go to school late and they flog them they will learn respect then when it's university time when he has been groomed in the word of god and morality you can send him abroad but if you want to want him to school abroad from credo make sure you do homeschooling how many of you know what they call homeschooling you don't even know homeschooling otherwise one day your child will come back home and say daddy do you know that we are from monkeys I'll give him the fivefold ministry. This, this. Is. And you know I'm anointed. So when he land, he say we are from monkeys. Then why are they still monkeys? So I will not mention him, but you know that guy that postulated that theory. That's a very occultic theory. Well, those of you in secondary school biology and all write it and pass you understand but we are not from monkeys we are from above the bible says he that is from above is above all monkeys monkeys that cannot stand straight culture mindsets are sourced from past experiences it is possible that a man will behave and reason based on the experiences he has had in the past Based on the experiences he has had in the past. Level of exposure. That's another source. So when you bring somebody from the countryside. You know what they call the countryside. That's the American way of saying village. When you bring somebody from the village. Call one of the remote village in Borno State. What is one of the remote? Just call it. Okay, okay, okay. Don't call somebody. It may be somebody's village. It's okay. You know some of us we are here to stop and you are a new creature in christ jesus but if they follow you to your village no road for your village will. road finish then they start trekking so when you bring somebody from that locality there are tendencies that the person will behave based on the exposure to infrastructural facilities to you know social trends and many of the things he sees it will he will respond based on what he has known mindsets are sourced from family backgrounds behavioral patterns in families mindsets can also be sourced from failure 
and limitations. Respectfully speaking, there are young ladies now that cannot keep a decent relationship. There must be immorality involved. Not because they are bad people, but maybe in the past they were abused or they were used to that. The first few relationships they had, they were used to sleeping around. It has become a mindset. So the lady now sees herself as a commodity that should be used in a relationship. And then it becomes very difficult. Even when she doesn't want to, she succumbs. Why? Mindset. There are some backgrounds where they believe in you testing the woman before you marry. Is it true? At least I didn't call name of place or name of anywhere. You know what it means to test? You don't know. You sleep with the woman first to be sure she's fertile. Then she'll get pregnant. You must marry her pregnant. There are places like that. All of these kinds of behaviors are mindset. And most of these things are strongholds that the enemy has placed in the minds of people. But tonight, every satanic programming that has been working against your destiny will be deactivated. I say tonight, we will attack every demonic mindset knowingly or unknowingly to you that is at work against your destiny in the name of jesus christ can you lay your right hand on your head in the next two minutes i want you to pray in tongues confront every demonic programming that is at work in your life any mindset you inherited either from your family or you inherited from friends or relationships associations around you any satanic programming that is at work against you against your destiny deactivate it now deactivate it now deactivate it now sit on that drums deactivate it now for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations arguments thoughts ideas Pull it down now. No more will you rule my life. We intercept those patterns. We attack those mindsets. We arrest it. We arrest the demonic agency behind it. We bring it down now. Hallelujah. Number one, I said it manifests in three ways. Psychological, number one, isn't it? Which we have explained. I wish we had time on that. Number two, ancestral. I want you to know that both the ancestral and the territorial descriptions of strongholds are influenced and controlled by mindsets. So number two and number three is controlled and heavily influenced by number one. Ancestral, family patterns, cycles, limitations, yokes, certain trends that exist in families, individual families. You may not find it at work in another place, but in this family, you will notice that no lady get married decently you will always find a lady who will get pregnant before marriage or out of wedlock or perhaps you find a family where only one person will rise in terms of career and financial empowerment and the others will be so impoverished that they will have to depend on this one person until that one person collapse that's a that's a trend of poverty it's ancestral. It can be ancestral. And when, it, when, it, when a stronghold is ancestral, it means it has become transgenerational. It, it transcends from one generation after another. Unfortunately for this, our young generation now, 
who just meet a lady on the road he sees a beautiful lady that looks like the one he saw in his dream of course she will look like the one he saw in his dream because he's always watching cinderella watching which other one snow white telemundo that's why he's always seeing those fair ladies in his dream and i'm not i'm not against that okay and i'm not against the type of ladies he said for a person that she must be attractive physically <laughs> and then you don't bother to check her family background check her origin what are the patterns behavioral patterns limitations trends that have transcended one generation after the other because that fine face you are seeing may just be the expression of a 450 generations of bondage true no we don't do that you just see a young lady and say i want to no let me use a lady now you just see a young lady let me use one of these my beautiful ladies um come let me use you please come he's just walking on the street though because there's pressure for him to get married and then he sees this damsel say ah just stand there say she's well dressed she's looking good ah, this one must be very decent and it, you know it's good to have the uh, outside packaging is good okay uh -huh. but you don't judge a book by its cover but the reason why you have a beautiful cover is because there is content in the book do you understand what i'm saying so when you know you have content package well but if you don't have content use the money for packaging to put content did you hear what i said not that you dress fine and there's nothing in your head I'm talking both men and women now. You dress fine and there's no idea in your head that can multiply your husband's finances in 30 days. Or as a young boy, you package and wear jeans and wear shoes like my own. And you're just walking around and you don't know anything. Of course, in this generation, social media generation. And I don't mean to be insultive. I just mean to be corrective this night. And then he sees this young lady, please be seated. Say, beautiful, and she's well dressed and decent. Say, ah, this must be my wife. And without even trying to study about her family, her background, where she's coming from, what are the strongholds that exist? No, he's on his marriage straight. He said, I've seen somebody to marry, and he's asking her, When am I going to see your parents? And unknown to him in this family people are cut off at their prime every great person that they had not you just god forbid not you but every great person that rose in their family was cut off in their prime maybe because there are spirits at work in the family that have vowed to see that the destinies of men in that family never see the light of day and then he comes innocently as a lamb to the slaughter and he wants to get married and after marriage, he's seen people pursuing him in his dream. Please be seated. God bless you, my dear. If you are a young person and you want to get married, study. Study history. If we don't know history, we will make the mistakes of history till we become history. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Forget that fine face. It's good though, but leave that face first. Especially in these days, you know, <laughs> most times when a young man comes and meets me and tells me, God showed him 50%, I, I, I don't believe what he's saying. I can tell you. Most of the people I've seen that did that, at the end of the day, it either didn't work or it became something else. And I'm not saying God cannot show you. But you see, let's not, the dealings of God with us are individual. There is a general dealing that God can have with all of us based on the principles of his word but as you begin to chart out your cause in life and in knowing god there are specifics that god will have that are customized to your life that cannot apply to another person so i can't come here and teach you what god is dealing with me on no it may be different from you my calling because of the the responsibility of my calling to the body of christ or to a territory god may decide he must choose my wife However, for you, he that findeth a wife, finds him. Go and find. Are we, are we getting that? 
Now back to my teaching. Let me show you examples of family patterns in scripture. We will pray this night though. We will break patterns. We will break cycles this night. There are families where one person from every generation must run mad. So there's a spirit of insanity that has fortified a stronghold of the affliction called insanity. And then that young lady all of you thought was brilliant and bright waiting for her to finish university and go abroad and god will enlarge her course and help the others in her final year she ran mad in the exam hall her family is like that some of you come from families where you didn't know what your ancestors did and so you are from a lineage of demonic priesthood and so there must be one person that will carry the staff of office and you don't know why you are seeing spirits and all kinds of things from your village and snakes could it be that they are appearing to you to tell you we have claim over you it's time to come and carry the staff family patterns family strongholds the bible speaks about a man called king let me show you something about Cain before we pray. In Genesis chapter 4 verse, I, I, I studied the life of Cain and I discovered two patterns that existed in him and in his lineage. First of all, I studied the pattern of wandering in the life of Cain. Genesis chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible tells us that Cain was cursed with the curse of wandering. He will wander about. And the Bible says that he dwelt in the land when he departed from the presence of God. Look at the verse. It says he went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. The word Nod, when I checked it, it means wanderings, wanderings. W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. In other words, that is a land where people have a destiny to wander about aimlessly. That's where he went to stay. And the Bible carefully told us that Cain was a seed from the wicked one in 1st John chapter 3 verse 12. I'm not sure Adam was the father of Cain. That's another day teaching. We'll do it another day. But in 1st John 3:12, the Bible calls Cain of the wicked one, of the wicked one. Just the same way Jesus told the Pharisees, say you are of your father the devil. He was a seed from the serpent. And that's the reason why he had the character of the serpent wandering. Hello, Job chapter 1 verse 7, where Satan appeared before God among the sons of God. God asked him, he said, where comest thou, Satan? What did Satan say? He said, from coming to and fro. Is that not what it means to wander about? Okay. And that he, he became a progenitor of aimless wanderers. That's why nothing is spoken about his lineage again all through the Bible. Another thing I saw in the, the pattern I saw in the family of Cain was murder, killing. There was a it was there was a bloodthirsty spirit in that family. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8, 8 and 14. The Bible tell, told us that Cain killed his brother Abel. Remember, 1 John 3 12 tells us he was of the wicked one. And in John chapter 8, verse 44. Jesus told them, he said, you have your father the devil. He said, he's a murderer from the beginning. He's a murderer from the beginning. Where in Genesis did you see that Satan killed somebody? Yeah, Jesus said he's a murderer from the beginning. Could it be that Cain was not Adam's seed? That's the reason why in Luke chapter 4, I know this is big for some of us, but in Luke chapter 3 rather, when the Bible began to give the genealogy of Jesus, it traced him back to Seth and he called Seth the son of Adam. And Adam was the son of God. You remember that in Genesis chapter 3, God told the serpent, he said, I will put enemy to between you and the woman and between your seed and the seed of the woman. Of course we know he was not talking about the serpent bodily form. He was talking about Satan. 
who was talking through the serpent between your seed and the seed of the woman first of all a woman doesn't carry seed so that you don't interpret that portion of scripture literally a woman does not carry seed so which seed is he talking about and then he said the seed of the serpent could it be that there are those seeds on earth today that they are not human beings they are only putting on human bodies but they are not human beings they are offsprings of the of the evil one the bible will usually call them sons and daughters of Belial. are we getting something this night i mean look at jesus and the pharisees jesus called them brood of vipers what is a viper a snake and to show you that i didn't start with jesus john the baptist who was the forerunner of jesus he called them the same thing he said you people are brood of vipers brood means offspring that means you people you are not normal human beings you are not jews you are just putting on bodies as human beings and you happen to be among the nationality of israel but you are of another offspring after all we read about giants last week There's a day we'll come, we'll talk about that. There's a day that we'll come, we'll talk about I'm just trying to open your minds. That's the reason why there are some human beings on earth today that the level of their wickedness is beyond human capacity. There are some of you, like there are people like that in your family, in your village. They are so wicked in witchcraft, they don't mind killing till they are killed. You think they are human beings? That's the seed of the wicked one. So the next time you see a fine girl on the street or you go to a restaurant and you just see a handsome guy who is macho with chest remove that your natural eye and put your spiritual eye i hope it's not the son of cain that you are seeing that's how some women got married to some men and they can't have children and there's nothing wrong with them because they didn't they thought they married a man they married a spirit And all you have been doing the last seven years for the man to come to church he will not come to church and he will not be born again you have been praying and sowing seed and it will not change check very well could that be the offspring are we ready to pray time will fail me to talk about judah family strongholds there was a spirit of lust and immorality in judah so much that in genesis chapter 38 judah slept with his son's wife and she gave birth to children what do you call that one i don't know what you call it and one of the laws that god gave his children uh, uh, the children of israel was that a child of incest would not stand in the congregation of the righteous or an idolater maybe that's the reason why it took 10 generations before david could sit on the throne judah had the royal lineage he had the he had royalty on him but nobody from judah rose up to lead israel until david's time check your bible very well moses was not from the tribe of judah joshua was not from the tribe of judah samuel was not from the tribe of judah Saul was not from the tribe of Judah. You know why? There was a spirit. Because that thing Judah did broke out a curse in the family. And God has said that no child of incest will stand amongst my people. That's why every generation in Israel, if kingship was to come to Judah, it would jump because the cost was still resting. Why? Because of one man. And you think that when David finally became king, it had ended. The lust was on David. In fact, theologians, many theologians agree that David was from another woman. His seven brothers, his seven elder brothers were from the legitimate wife. His, his own mother was probably a concubine. Many theologians believe that. Hence, the spirit of lust in his life. One wife was not enough. And then in a time when kings go to war, he stood on his roof and saw a woman and slept with her. And he didn't stop with him. To his son, Absalom. Absalom stood in front of the whole of Israel on the roof and slept with all his concubines. There was a pattern. There was a stronghold. A man after my heart. 
but lost was trailing them some of us as i'm talking respectfully speaking you can see certain patterns at work that you have to decide this night is either it breaks and falls apart forever or i'm not i'm not ready for destiny so you see anointed people from the family but all of them have woman problem all of them These are family or ancestral and then finally territorial strongholds this is now more to the spiritual dimension territorial strongholds How many of you know that every the earth was created to express and to reveal a spiritual dimension this earth came out from the realm of the spirit that means that every location every geographical territory is an expression of a spiritual territory whether you know it or not whether you like it or yes that there are beyond human rulers and governments over our geographical territories there are spiritual forces that rule and hold sway over these territories when i talk about territories first of all i'm talking about locations geographical locations and then i'm also talking about spheres of influences in life for instance the medical profession that's a territory I hope you know what I'm talking about. That's a territory. In Ezekiel chapter 28, there were two people that were addressed there. When you start reading from verse 1, he said, write a lamentation to the prince of Tyre. And then when you come to verse 12 or 13, he said, write to the king of Tyre. Two different people. One is the human ruler. The human counterpart the other one is the spiritual so over territories over geographical locations over professions career spheres there are spirits whether you believe it or not there are spirits that have rule over these places they determine the pattern the reasoning and the oppression the operations in these places the bible spoke about daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 6 when you read Daniel chapter 10 the Bible says Daniel prayed for 21 days and when the angel appeared to him the angel said the day you set your heart to pray he said that your prayers were heard he said but the prince of Persia who stood me which prince is that I hope you know it was not the human king it was not Dairos it was not uh, Cyrus the Persian king no this prince was a spirit that had rule over the Persian kingdom everybody from that race was under the rule and the domain of that spirit whether you believe it or not even in this city where we are there are spirits hanging over this atmosphere they dictate the, the trends the pattern the culture the activities the possibilities that exist within the city they dictate it they have a curriculum for the destiny of every life and it's to the end that every life that will survive in that territory will be used to adorn the kingdom of darkness even if it's a preacher i'm telling you real stuff he said the prince of persia which stood me and until michael prayed then another prince was sent why is the bible using prince 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 that's because every throne you see on earth is governed by a spirit entity in the realm of the spirit whoever ascends that throne must knowingly or knowingly consciously or unconsciously fraternize with the spirit that have rule over that throne that's why some of your governors they were good before they became governors even when they were senators they were good the moment they became governors they became demons 
the moment they become sen- they became senators and they entered those red chambers they became another thing somebody told me the story one time years ago about the senator while he was seated in his office a woman appeared to him i didn't say the woman entered the office according to the story i didn't say the woman opened the door and entered the woman appeared how many of you will be standing there when you see that kind of thing some of you your spirit will disappear and leave your body there a senator in abuja a woman appeared and the woman said i'm the chief of the witches in this territory you must give my daughter's job this is her cv and when the man was still there i don't know what he was trying to say the woman removed her scarf and there were two horns in her head that shoot out he said just in case you don't believe me if you don't this seat will vomit you spirits spirits this witchcraft and wizardry you see all of those things are just foot soldiers there are controlling powers in fact there are families where you even have christians they don't even know that these powers exist you just watch the pattern you just watch certain because the spirit will want to find expression and he will express himself through certain limitations that are extra human for instance you find affliction everybody from old to young are sick old people bury their children that's a pattern that's the expression of a spirit young ladies beautiful and intelligent but they don't get married till they are both 30 that is a spirit expressing himself there are powers that have rule believe it or not let me show you something Luke chapter 8 let me show you something territorial powers territorial forces spirit beings and agencies that have control no matter how intelligent and how beautiful you are no matter how illustrious you are except you sustain an intelligence that will counter the spirit you will come under their hold I'm, I'm not here to scare you i'm here to reveal to you what has been hidden from many of us luke chapter 8 let me show you something there verse 26 to 31 and then we'll read mark chapter 5 verse 1 it's the story about the demoniac that jesus encountered the bible says then they sailed to the country of the gatherings which is opposite galilee all of a sudden the first person to greet jesus is a madman and when he stepped out on the land there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time and he wore no clothes nor did he live in a house but in tombs you look at it why will a normal human being live in graveyard why Go on. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. Go to Mark chapter 5, verse 1. I want to show you something there. This guy was not just a madman. This guy was a human chalice, a human vessel that carried the demon spirits that had control over that city. That place was called gatherings. The word gatherings means walls or defense. Gatherings was a location within a particular region called Decapolis. Decapolis means 10 cities. So gatherings, walls, defense. Decapolis, 10 cities. That means this city gatherings was the spiritual custodian of the defense and protection of that entire region. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the first person to greet Jesus, it was not the mayor of the city. It was not the governor of the city. It was not even an entourage to give him a befitting welcome. It was a madman that welcomed him. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the gatherings. Go on. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him nor even with chains not even with chains because he had often he was had often been bound with chains and shackles and the chains had been pulled up can you imagine this by a man literal chains on the hand of a man and he breaks it 
I know a pastor who told me one time that he was ministering deliverance to a lady. And as soon as he said in the name of, the, in the name of Jesus, the lady stood up on her feet, pushed everybody holding her, stretched her hand and a knife appeared. You go still stay when you see that one. Some of you say, he that fights and runs away. When you hear these things, if you don't have a spe- but if you if you have a little encounter in the deliverance ministry, you know that I'm not telling you fame trick. These are not cartoon tales. These are real. I told you last week that there was a dear lady I was to pray for. Nice and calm lady speaking very quietly. When it was time for prayers, I said in the name of Jesus, she carried all my sofas and threw them away. One person. Now go back to Luke chapter 8. Give us verse 31. Why did this guy come to negotiate with demons? Or with Jesus rather? Because when Jesus saw him and tried to cast him out, he spoke and said, we are legion. Legion means 5,000 or 6,000 soldiers. That means there were about 6,000 demons in this man. It was the commander that spoke. Somebody say stronghold. This is what we call demonic stronghold. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. If you read King James translation, the word abyss is exchanged for the word territory. Territory. Why were they begging that he should not send them out of the territory? They did not beg and say, don't cast us out. No. They knew he was eventually going to cast them out. But they negotiated where they will go to. They say, if you send us out, don't take us out of this territory. Because this are con- their power is based on their residence in that territory. There are spirits that hang over cities. There are spirits, the Bible is clear about it. There are spirits that hang over regions, over territories. If you take those spirits away from those territories, they lose their hold. They become illegal on earth and they have to go out of the earth's surface. So for them to be legal, they have to maintain the place where they were invited in. So there are spirits hanging over the space of Meduguri. Whether your naked eye sees it or not, there are. You sleep in the night, but they are active, going from one house to another, looking for how to tear down and bring to bondage human beings looking for how to enslave destinies if you don't believe me how come there are dreams you have you don't understand you call it dreams it's not dream it's real this is the realm of the spirit at work territorial powers there are powers hanging over territories that anybody that end their own job is to ensure that nobody succeeds in that territory and goes out with the success of that territory i told you my encounter in 2018 i was praying and i was caught up in the spirit and i saw these demons over there that's how i know that there are five gates into meduguri go around one day and check there are five gates that gate you see in bruno express come and prove me wrong there are five of them go around and check it each of them carrying these two serpentile spirits and in the vision what i saw was their motto their watchword was that Go as you come. So when you come in, they will scan you. Okay, you got an NGO job. That's why you came, eh? You are welcome. They will allow you to make money, but you will never go out with that money. Except you sustain another intelligence that counters what they do. How many ministries have left this city and gone to another place and exploded much more and sustained relevance than when they were here? How many businesses had been here? Check Meduguri. How many businesses do you see that can go beyond 10 years? Any business you see that goes beyond 10 years, that's the lifespan. That business, whether they know it or not, whether the proprietor knows it or not, he is being helped or sponsored by a supernatural agency. And I was telling somebody one day, I said, these other people, they know how to kill rams and bury rams and give a lot of things to their malam. But it's in the Christian dome that when they want to do something, they invite pastor to pray. And when pastor is praying over a two million naira business, they give him five alive. Five alive. Thank you very much, pastor, for praying. You wait five years. 
I'm telling you what I've studied. Please be seated. I have studied, listen, I've studied businesses, enterprises here, business enterprise. I've studied organizations. I've studied all kinds of, or every kind of sphere of influence in this land. And I can tell you their lifespan. I can tell you the programming, the spirits hanging above them. Territorial strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not calm, but mighty true God. Why do you think they tried to stop Daniel from praying? Will you think they were human beings that were trying to fight Daniel? No. Daniel was one man that existed and ruled in four regimes. Four kings came and met him. What kind of wisdom did he possess? What kind of spirit did he carry? And then because of Daniel's popularity, when you read Daniel chapter 6 verse 3, the Bible says the king thought of setting Daniel over the entire realm. And that attracted the spirit. They said, no, this Daniel's own is too much. The spirits of the Midian and the Persians, they said, no, your own is too much. This kind of rising is too much. We have to do something about him. So they, 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 they invoked all the human counterparts in, the, in this, the leaders. The Bible says they came together and made the king sign a decree. Nobody should pray. Why was it prayer? The spirits had studied Daniel's life and they saw that that was what gave him longevity. You remember that in Daniel chapter 10, the angel told Daniel, he said, the prince of Persia withstood me until Michael the prince was sent. And in Daniel chapter 12 verse 1, he said, and it shall come to pass in the last days that Michael the archangel, the prince of Israel. So every time Daniel prayed, the prince over his nationality, Israel, which was Michael, was standing for him. And so it was a contest within spirits, between gods. You think it was just Daniel and some people? No. It was a battle between gods. Brothers and sisters, learn how to turn the battle into the supernatural. Learn how to fight from the supernatural. Don't fight on the ground. That's what the Bible calls us eagles. And it calls the Satan a serpent. The power of a serpent is the dust, the ground. An eagle does not fight on the ground. An eagle only conquers on the ground. If an eagle will fight a serpent, it's very simple. Pick the serpent and take him up. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to spiritual warfare, if you must wrestle with the devil and break into destiny, you need to learn how to turn the fight into the spiritual. You need to learn how to go supernatural. You need to learn how to go mysteriously. You fight mysteries with mysteries. You don't fight it with your human intelligence. You keep applying for jobs. You are qualified, but there are spirits that have seen you. They've marked you. And if you don't deal with those spirits, your certificate will be paper. Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, but he was called Jabez. Why? A woman said, I bore him in sorrow. So sorrow he shall be. But this night, we are going to pull down those spirits. I said, we'll tear down those spirits. Ten of them, two to each gate. I'll never forget that encounter. So when you come here and you see what God is doing and you see you see this kind of sustenance for four or five years, that's because certain we have we have we have secured intelligence to combat certain spirits. You can't do what I'm doing in this land and survive five years. You can't, except you understand something supernatural. Time will fail me to tell you the spirits that have appeared to me. You just think it's Medugri, that's how it is. That's not how it is. So the spirit looks like the, the, the city looks like the spirit over it. So you are entering the city, and what you see looks ancient. That's because that's the identity of the spirit. In other words, everybody that will dwell in that city. Those spirits will turn your life to look like the city. You become ancient. You will become old and fade away. You will be forgotten. Except like Daniel, you know what to do. Brothers and sisters, before we pray, how do we combat these forces and tear down these strongholds? Two things and we pray. Number one, we must learn to engage the warfare dimensions of prayer. 
we must learn to engage the warfare dimensions of prayer there are different dimensions of prayer there is thanksgiving there is the, the prayer of supplication there is intercession but there is warfare warfare is when you take hold of spiritual mysteries and use them to legislate your way into dominion and authority use it to enforce that which is written about you he said whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven you can lose by being quiet over your destiny the word lose means to permit anytime you are quiet over your destiny you have permitted spirits we must learn the act of warfare can i share with you some of the things god taught me before we pray oh i wish we are out of time in warfare prayer especially when it is very intense and extreme one of the things you must learn how to do especially when you are confronting satanic strongholds you must learn how to engage the forces and the elements of the supernatural what are the forces and the elements of the supernatural flood the earth fire wind okay some of you have watched films but at airbender and all those are supernatural forces you must learn how to engage it in prayer how many of you believe what i'm telling you flood is one of the elements of the supernatural the bible says in isaiah 59 verses 19 so shall they fear the lord from the rising of the sun huh? from the east and the you know whatever to the to the, the rising of the sun he said and when the enemy comes in like a flood he didn't say the enemy is a flood he said when the enemy comes in in the original transcript of that scripture there is a comma when the enemy comes in comma like a flood the spirit of god so is the spirit of god that manifests as a flood what does a flood do with us? A flood raises standard. If there is flood in this place, you will not know the ground level because the water has risen. So it is the spirit of God that will manifest as a flood and raise a standard. Now in chapter 1, in verse 7 and 8, he said, The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he he knows those who trust in him. Verse 8. But with an overflowing flood. He will make an utter end of his place and darkness will pursue his enemies brothers and sisters there are some spirits you need to learn how to invoke that flood you need to invoke that supernatural dimension against them what i'm saying is strange but this is how you win extreme battles the earth can be used jeremiah 22 verse 29 oh earth 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 hear the word of the lord you can speak you can you can stand with authority given to you by heaven in the name of jesus and, and program something into the earth that fights witchcraft that fights the powers of darkness as long as their two feet touch the earth you can reprogram something against them we have not been taught all of these things in warfare a militant church must arise I said a militant church must arise that's how i pray oh that's how i pray no there's no spirituality or praise and worship there is no we believe in this we don't no 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 no, no. in warfare you don't do those things how about fire 97 of psalms verse 3 a fire goeth before him and burns his enemies on every side that means fire is the weapon you can use fire you they, they told jesus have you come to torment us before our time their time is when they will be cast into the lake of fire torment but you can use the fire of god to torment them now you can send fire over the atmosphere in the city where you live and torment the powers of darkness there are certain men in the body of christ that every time they enter a city to do crusade it's like all the demons will go on vacation what kind of prayers do you think they pray? Now you just listen to Riyad Bonki preach a nice sermon of salvation. And you think that's all about Riyad Bonki. Go to the secret and see the way they pray. Recently I was watching one of the crusades of Sifan in Zambia. 
a crusade they are doing recently and while they were interviewing one of the members of the team a white lady on the crusade ground before the crusade starts all of a sudden a tornado began to spin and come towards them you know tornado that wind that moves like this that's why i say you should learn how to engage the forces of the supernatural the powers of darkness know these things they take a powder making contentions blow it into the wind and it travels from one nation to another you think it's not natural how many of you are ready to pray the wind blew and scattered the place scattered their prayer tents when i was watching the video i laughed i said welcome to africa i know in us you people have a reporter and all of those things in books melin in africa is real it's real life it's, you, you can watch it broad day life witchcraft That's why if God trains you in Africa as a minister, you can pastor anywhere in the world. Don't think God forgot us and left us here in Meduguri. He's training us for the nations. But we need to use this kind of tough simulation. When you learn how to capture the demons here, you can stand over Asia. Engage the forces of the supernatural. There are times you need to call on the thunder of God. Psalms 81 in verse 6 and 7. He said, you called upon me and I answered you from the secret place of thunder. When Samuel sacrificed before God, when the Philistines wanted to attack Israel, the Bible says God responded by sending thunder. How many of you do those things in your prayers? No, it's milk and honey prayers we pray. Father, any demons fighting against my family, Lord, that you will arise and destroy them. No, arise where? What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. You stay and re you release decrees and declarations and counter them in the name of Jesus Christ. I intercept, I, I crush, and I make useless the plans of the enemy. I send weapons, arrows of fire. I send ponder. Like, you need to send it like that too. That's how I pray. Oh. Ask them, they know me. That's how I pray. Engage the forces in, in prayers. Engage those forces. Engage it over the powers that hang over your territory. Over the powers that hang over your profession. Some of you don't know that there is occultism in your profession. Get to the level of a consultant first. That's why you see that the three people that are teaching you, they are all occult members. You want to go to work in that kind of environment. He was working in government. There was nothing wrong with him. When they promoted him to become director, he entered the office, sat on his chair. After two weeks, he became paralyzed. No, don't say, I know somebody like that in Joss. Great guy was being a blessing to his, 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 his church. And then they made him special advisor to the governor. And only three weeks did he sit in that seat. Stroke hit him. Are we ready to pray? Another day we'll teach on this. But the last thing you can do is learn how to engage covenants. When they made a law that Daniel, nobody should pray for 30 days. The Bible says Daniel opened the windows in his room towards Jerusalem and he prayed. Why? Daniel knew that the fight had gone into the supernatural. The fight was spiritual. It was a contest between spirits and gods. Daniel had no match for this. So Daniel had to invoke covenants. There are times when doing spiritual warfare, territorially or ancestrally, where you need to engage the power of covenants and altars. There are men that God has made covenants with on this earth, in your territory where you are. In your family where you are there are men that made god has made covenants with and god is backing them by an unusual supply of power and authority sometimes you just need to pray connecting to them do you hear what i'm saying sometimes you need to learn how to connect to those covenants that's why he opened the window to jerusalem you know why his ancestor solomon many years ago made a covenant with god he said god anybody that calls upon you facing jerusalem that you will hear whether their prayer is just god help whether their prayer is a long sentence of prayer as long as they face jerusalem and pray hear them and daniel was of a royal seed he was from the sea he was a seed from solomon 
he knew that his, his own power was not enough he needed to connect to covenant there are territories where you don't need to struggle alone there are men that god has made covenants with that you must connect to for you to stand even in the political realm they call them godfathers recently sas went to visit obas and joy is that true and he called him my father how are they related that's politics they understand that he said if nigeria is a company or bass enjoy is the ceo that's what sas said so you just enter a territory you want to do ministry you're a young man with fire you have seen all kinds of visions ask for those who are controlling powers in the camp of god there are men they may not look it in the natural they may not even have large congregations but they have fought many battles with god and like a priest they have power with god and men there are men that they can stay in their parlor and say something and your destiny will open look for them and connect that's why we play with the, the mystery of spiritual fatherhood because we don't understand there are times when you need to pray connecting to those covenants that's what daniel did and this night god has raised sgni as an altar in this land and you didn't hear what I said. When you pray this night, you are praying on the strength of covenants that are older than you. You think we can survive four years doing what we are doing? Do you know the attacks? Are we ready to pray? Stand. Please, I want to beg every one of us. I know we are out of time, but I want you to give me 15 minutes. We are going to pray. Is that okay? I want you to give me 15 minutes. The forces of darkness that has held sway over your life. Some of you, your finances have been tied. You are anointed, I know. But why is it that there is something around your finance that will not just allow it manifest? Some of you have received prophecies some of you even have the intelligence the technical know-how but why is it around finances do you have your greatest contentions there are spirits at work there are strongholds you must deal with and how many of you are ready to deal with them this night please when i say pray i want you to pray violently many things will break in the realm of the spirit many things will shake in the realm of the spirit if you can open your mouth wherever you are standing in just two minutes and begin to blast in tongues and speak in the language of the spirit just begin to speak in the language of the holy ghost there are times when you need to go in tongues for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise with garments robed with blood he said but this shall be for burning of swell and fire something is about to shift in the atmosphere spirits are about to be dislodged satanic orchestrations are going down demonic programmings will be deactivated open your mouth and speak in tongues open your mouth and pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit Tonight there must be victory. Tonight standing things must be settled. Cases must be settled. Destinies must break forth. Hey! In Jesus name. Listen to me, we are going to pray. 
I will lead you to pray some prayer punch. Now, I hope you will not be tired. Are we ready to pray? Let me hear you shout yes. There are, listen, there are demon spirits, demon entities that are known as watchers and gatekeepers. Listen to me carefully. A gatekeeper is one who has control over access. Access to territories, access to anything whatsoever. A watcher is one that maintains demonic surveillance over the destinies and the lives of men, over families. We are going to bring down those watchers. Over your family, over your destiny, we are going to bring them down. Can I share with you an experience before we pray? A few years ago, 2019, I was, I was in a season of fasting and prayer. Listen, we are going to pray now. And that particular week, I didn't feel like breaking the fast in the evening. So I continued without food. And then on the third day, I decided to break the fast. And usually I like this juice that they blend on the street. What they call it? Banana juice and all of that. So I like it very well. And I decided to go to the main road to get it for myself. Still fasting. As I was walking towards the road, I saw two ladies coming before me. You know this, um, like Malo, they were dressed like Malo, you understand? Innocent young ladies coming. Instantly, it was like a flash. At maybe just three or four seconds, my eyes opened. And one of them that was wearing this hijab, what I saw was the head of a cobra. Life, I, I, I saw it, not with my, I, my eyes were not closed. My eyes were open, I saw it. Now that's a young lady you will just see walking up and down. Somebody say watcher. Some of them, but they move around like human beings, but they are not human beings. They are watchers. They maintain surveillance. They can transform into birds. They can transform into animals and keep watch over a family. They can maintain 30 days, 60 days surveillance, watching your every move. They know when you collect salary. And once you collect that salary, they initiate a program. You spend until you finish. The day before you collect the salary, in the night you sleep, you have a dream. And you are packing money and putting it inside somewhere. And that place has holes. And you can't explain how your salary comes. Every satanic watcher and gatekeeper is going down this night. I say it's going down this night. Say after me, every demonic watcher. Every demonic watcher. Manipulating the seasons of my destiny. Manipulating the seasons of my destiny. And my family, and my family, be destroyed, be destroyed by the sword of vengeance. By the sword of vengeance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every demonic watcher, every spirit entity, watching over my destiny. Over my family to bring limitations, to bring destructions. I invoke the sword of the Lord's vengeance. I invoke the sword of vengeance. I invoke the sword of vengeance. Be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed, be destroyed. When a man or spirit or animal, every demonic water be arrested, be destroyed by the sword of the Lord's vengeance. In Jesus, name we pray. Say every satanic gatekeeper. Every satanic gatekeeper. Please, whether you, I know some of you don't believe these things. No problem. Come next Sunday or next month. We'll talk about what you believe. But just believe for this night and pray. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Say after me, every satanic gatekeeper. Every satanic gatekeeper. Attached to the gates of my destiny. Attached to the gates of my destiny. 
attached to the gates of my life attached to the gates of my life be consumed by fire be consumed by fire in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every satanic gate keeper over the gates of my destiny over the gates of my finances over the gates of my life hey hey be destroyed by fire by fire by fire by fire engage the weapons engage the forces of the supernatural by fire by fire by fire Shela bagata la 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 bot. Shela bagata baladas. Sheka baladata baladata balada. Sekoto saba rabaka. Ekete kebo soto. Sheka ba. Satanic gatekeepers. Be consumed by fire. In Jesus. Let me pray. Repeat after me. I invoke the blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood of Jesus to seal, to seal, and to shut, and to shut every satanic access, every satanic access into my thoughts, into my thoughts, dreams, dreams, and life, and life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's say it again. I invoke the blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood of Jesus. Remember last week I taught you of the blood of Jesus, isn't it? I invoke the blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood of Jesus to seal and to shut. To seal and to shut every satanic access. Every satanic access into my thoughts. Into my thoughts. Dream space. Dream space and life. And life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Invoke the blood. Seal those gates. Seal those access. Seal those loopholes. Seal those loopholes. Invoke the blood. Seal them. Seal them. Seal them. Seal them. In the name of Jesus. Seal them. Seal them. Over your dreams. Spirits that infest your dreams. Spirits that molest you in dreams. Seal those access. Seal those access. In Jesus. Name we pray. Hallelujah. Are we tired? The Lord give us strength in Jesus' name. Now these prayers, the Lord revealed it to me by inspiration this morning. Nine of them. He said, tell them to pray it. By the time we are done, even in the midst of these prayer sessions, there will be a lot of deliverance. There will be a lot of things that will happen. Say after me, every satanic seed. Every satanic seed. Now let me explain something to you. It is a demonic technology for people to go to sleep in the night and in their dreams see and interact with all kinds of things that they are not comfortable with. Only for them to wake up with afflictions in their bodies. Some people go to sleep in the night and they see a man come to them and make love to them that man is a spirit that seed is now in your body that seed may be responsible for barrenness it may be responsible for fibroid it may be responsible for delay and so we must uproot those satanic seeds jesus said whatever my father in heaven has not planted shall be what shall be what are we ready tonight satanic seeds Say after me, every satanic seed. Every satanic seed. There will be deliverance as we pray this prayer. Ushers, ushers, please be patient. There will be, I just saw, I just saw a move of the power of God. There will be deliverance as we pray this prayer. Say after me, every satanic seed. Every satanic seed. In my body. In my body. That is not of God. That is not of God. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. And flushed out. And flushed out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hold on. If you are a lady, please put your right hand on your abdomen. If you are a lady, just put your right hand on your abdomen as you pray. 
Let's say it one more time. Every satanic seed. Every satanic seed. In my body. In my body. That is not of God. That is not of God. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. And flushed out. And flushed out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Open your mouth and pray. Every satanic seed. Every se- help them. Help them. Help them. Every satanic seed. Every satanic seed. Be uprooted. Be flushed out. Any seed of darkness that has crept into my body through my dreams, be uprooted, be flushed out, be uprooted, be flushed out, be uprooted, be flushed out. Be uprooted, be uprooted. In Jesus, name we pray. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Now just ladies, let me pray for ladies. Put your right hand on your womb. I just feel an anointing. Shh. I just feel an anointing to make a decree. Write your symbols for me, please. Ladies, put your right hand on your womb. I invoke the fire of God in the name of Jesus. And I destroy every satanic seed in your life, in your body, in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed by fire. By fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire. That's it. Just help them, please. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I separate myself. I separate myself. Wait, wait. There are seven people. Wait. Shh, shh, just be quiet. God is showing me seven people that will experience deliverance by the hand of God now. There are seven. Ushers, you will know them. I don't know. Some of them will be very violent, but they will not be able to stand. Please just help those who are under the anointing. God is doing a lot of things here. But I saw at least seven people that will be arrested now. The powers of just help them, please. As we pray this prayer, say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I separate myself. I separate myself from every satanic covenant. From every satanic covenant. Every satanic union. Every satanic union. Working against my life. Working against my life. My marriage. My marriage. My relationship. My relationship. My destiny. My destiny. Open your mouth and pray. There are seven, at least seven people. That the power of God will arrest. Those satanic covenants will be arrested. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. Those satanic covenants. Those satanic unions. I crush them now. I crush them now. I crush them now. Working against my life, working against my destiny. I separate myself. I separate myself. I separate myself by fire. By fire, my God. There's fire in this place. There's fire in this place. Let those covenants be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. In Jesus, name we pray. Fire is burning. Say after me, I invoke the elements of the supernatural. I invoke the elements of the supernatural. I invoke the elements of the supernatural. I invoke the elements of the supernatural to destroy, to destroy, to counter, to counter, to break, to break. Every satanic slave master. Every satanic slave master. 
and all forms of demonic enslavement and all forms of demonic enslavement in my life in my life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now listen before you pray there are spirits that are satanic slave masters i told you this is my specialty there are satanic slave masters and demonic you know forms of enslavement listen to me every time you have a dream and you find yourself unnecessarily serving some people that you don't know or you find yourself afraid or limited in any way that means there is the work of satanic slave masters in your life but they will let you go today i said they will let you go today amen I invoke the elements of the supernatural. I invoke the element of the supernatural to destroy, to destroy every satanic slave master, every satanic slave master, and all forms of demonic enslavement, and all forms of demonic enslavement in my life, in my life, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Pray for sixty seconds. <laughs> satanic slave masters. Be destroyed now. The money pieces. Be open now. Be open now. In Jesus. They will pray. The Lord strengthen every one of us. Say after me, every satanic laboratory, every satanic laboratory, and demonic storage facility, and demonic storage facility. Listen to me. With all due respect, let me give you an example. Listen, there are satanic warehouses, there are demonic prisons, there are satanic laboratories where the things of your destiny, of your life, are stolen and kept. Listen. If you are here, perhaps you are a man and you have dreamed and seen yourself having sex in the dream and you wake up and saw semen, literal semen spilled out. I don't mean to get you afraid because you will be delivered this night. What has happened is that they have taken your seed. God showed me this week that there are places in the realm of the spirit called satanic laboratories. Just like a normal laboratory is where they do a lot of tests. That's what they do. They do it with the seed of humans. They do it with your finance. Anything that they steal from you. But we are going to destroy those laboratories. And retrieve everything that was stolen from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus every satanic laboratory every satanic laboratory and demonic storage facility and demonic storage facility where my seed is being kept where my seed is being kept be destroyed by fire be destroyed by fire in jesus name in jesus name Open your mouth and be destroyed by fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. In Jesus. Because of time, I have to rush us. Say after me, every satanic. Sorry, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I invade. I invade. And intercept. I intercept. Every demonic bank. Every demonic bank. And satanic warehouse. Satanic warehouse. Where my resources. Where my resources have been kept. Have been kept. And I retrieve them now. 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 Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Retrieve your resources. Retrieve your finances. Retrieve your career. Retrieve your marriages. Retrieve your spouse. Retrieve your destiny. Retrieve your destiny. 
in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lastly, say after me, every evil programming. Every evil programming. Working against my destiny. Working against my destiny. And family. And family. I beg you in the name of God. See, I'm kneeling down to beg you. Please believe what, what you are praying. Believe what you are praying. This is not, I didn't manufacture this from a book. It came by revelation. This is warfare. This is how it is done. Are we ready to pray? I want you to lay your right hands on your head. Just be quiet, everybody. I just said yes. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be strength. I just saw I just saw a spirit leave. Say after me every evil programming. Every evil programming. There will be deliverances now. Ushers, please bring them to the front. Every evil programming. Every evil programming. Working against my destiny. Working against my destiny. And family. And family. And career, and career and ministry and, ministry, and, finances, and finances and marriage and, marriage, and relationship, and relationship. Every, evil programming, every evil programming working against my destiny working against my destiny be deactivated now be deactivated now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus shout now 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 now, now. now. open your mouth and pray <laughs>
name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your right hand. Just lift your right hand. A few decrees and we are done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every satanic prison, every demonic prison house where the destiny of anyone here is hidden. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I crush those prisons and I command an outbreak and a freedom of destinies. I release those destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, I break every satanic covenant. Whether it was entered into by you unknowingly or knowingly, or by your ancestries, every satanic covenant, by the blood of Jesus, I cancel, I break, and I destroy now. In the name of Jesus. I just felt the fire of God on my right hand. He said, Thy right hand, O God, is glorious in power. Father, anyone that has been tormented, oppressed by any spirit, whether an individual or family is represented, whether here or online, I, I enforce and invoke the element of fire and I declare a total separation. A total separation. I command those spirits, Go! Go! Go in the name of Jesus. Wherever your seed has been taken to, seed of any kind, I crush those satanic laboratories. I crush those satanic warehouses. And I declare, let it be retrieved and restored. Let it be retrieved and restored. Please put your right hand down. I pray for anyone here that has dreams with snakes, dreams with serpents. Time and again, you see those snakes and serpents around you. La Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. I come against those satanic spirits. I come against those territorial spirits. I come against those serpentine spirits. And I command fire upon you now. Fire upon you now. Be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus. Lay your right hand on your head. Finally, every satanic program working in the minds of God's people, working in your family, I use you as a point of contact. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, I pull down those strongholds. I separate you from those mindsets. And now in the name of Jesus, I command those spirits behind those mindsets. In the name of Jesus, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Every family pattern of limitation, cycles, and bondages of the enemy by fire, by fire, by fire, we eradicate and we destroy those patterns. We destroy those patterns now. And I declare that you are free. The battle is over. The battle is over. I see the fire of God burning on somebody's legs right now. He's separating you from family and ancestral powers. That's what I'm saying. I see the fire of God. It will be very strong. You can't contain it. I see it burning on your leg. Every connection to your father's house and your mother's house that has brought demonic infestations into your life. I separate you from those things by fire. I separate you by fire. In the name of Jesus. For thou hast broken the staff of the oppressor as in the day of Midian. I declare that from today, 
the battle is over in your life step into seasons of victory in jesus mighty name we pray can you clap your hands and give god praise hallelujah hallelujah please keep standing we're almost done just be patient please just keep standing now father i pray for these people that are at the front and i stretch out my right hand anyone that is still held bound by any stronghold let there be a separation by fire let there be a separation by fire in the name of jesus whom the son of man sets free is free indeed therefore i declare you free i declare you free let the battles be overturned in your favor in jesus mighty name you can go back to your seat finally before we close if you are here and you need to give your life to christ i'm just giving 30 seconds why we'll all stand if you need to give your life to christ you don't know the lord jesus you're not born again maybe you even prayed the prayers we have prayed but you know genuinely you need to repent and return to god while we are all standing please be patient everybody's standing everywhere protocol ushers help me please everybody's standing everywhere in just a minute we can't close without giving this opportunity if you are here you need to know the lord you need to know jesus as your lord and savior or you need to be restored back to him you need to rededicate your life wherever you are please raise your right hand up quickly 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 so that the prayers you have prayed will, will have meaning if any man be in christ is a new creature let's know if there are any amongst us like that please raise your right hand up please raise your